Welcome to section 1-4 tools and procedures. This is going to be a pretty quick notes running through um, basically just the microscope and the comet measurement system that is used in science. Scientists use a variety of equipment and technology to conduct scientific experiments. Some examples would be computers, electronic balances, microscopes, and telescopes. So these are just a few of the um, pieces of equipment that scientists use. The Comet Measurement System, I'm sure that you have learned this before, is going to be the metric system. So most scientists, once again, use the metric system to do all of their uh, measuring, except when it comes to the United States and we're still stuck in inches and feet and gallons and pounds and all of those things. We have yet to move to the metric system. We've tried, but without any success. The metric system is a decimal system of measurement whose units are based on multiples of 10. And I think in physical science, you spend quite a bit of time focusing on the metric system, so we're not going to do that much of it in biology. A revised version of the original metric system is called the International System of Units, or it's abbreviated as SI. As far as analyzing biological data, scientists record collected data in a table and then make a graph. And In the beginning of the school year, we worked on taking uh, data and um, putting it into different types of um, figures and graphs to show um, how we do this. The reason that scientists put things into graphs or tables is because then it's very easy to detect a pattern of change. Scientists use computers to help analyze large amounts of data and that's probably the common practice today except when you are in the classroom and you will do whatever calculating probably you have to do by hand. Um, things like the structure of molecules, they're much um, larger, and so it's just easier to do it with a computer. Computers also gather data from satellites to make predictions about complex phenomena, uh, such as global climate patterns, and that's the way most of our weather is uh, predicted. All right, the main thing we're going to deal with is the microscope. Microscopes, um, which I'm sure you've used before you got to Craig High School, they are devices that magnify images that are too small to see with an unaided eye. The type of microscope that we use in school is what's called a compound light microscope. Light microscopes magnify using visible light, and in our case, if the light source is going to be a light bulb. Back in the day, they used a mirror, and then they just used regular daylight in order to put the light through the microscope. Electron microscopes focus using beams of electrons. So pretty easy. Light microscope uses light, and electron microscope focuses on using beams of electrons. The light microscope can produce clear images of objects at a magnification of about 1,000 times. The type that we use in school is called a compound light microscope, which allows light to pass through the specimen and uses two lenses. And that's key as you are answering some of the questions. You're going to use two lenses in order to form your image. Characteristics of the light microscope, they can observe dead organisms and their parts, so things that are on prepared slides, we will, we will um, look at under a microscope. They are able to observe tiny organisms and their cells while they are still alive. Uh, that would be like things swimming around in pond water. Chemical stains or dyes are used to show specific structures. Sometimes things in the cell are more transparent, and so you use a stain in order to make certain features stand out more. And video cameras can be used to produce moving 3D images. And if you take anatomy and physiology, Mrs. Worm sometimes puts 
uh, camera on to show you certain things uh, on the smart board. As far as the microscope goes, your note guide is labeled, but we'll just run through these very quickly. The, you'll need to know the function, the body tube, the revolving nose piece, which moves those objective lenses. There are um, two main objective lenses. There's low power, which is the shorter of the two lenses, and then there's high power, which is the longer of the two objective lenses. Then we have the stage clips. The function of the stage clips is to hold down the microscope slide. The diaphragm is going to change the amount of light that is coming through. So what happens is you rotate this knob right here and it will change the amount of light that you can see coming through there. The light source, which of course this is an electric one, so you're going to plug it in. There's the ocular lens. That's ocular means eye, so this is the place where you're going to place your eye. That's why it's called the ocular lens. There's the arm, and we use the arm, once again, to um, help carry the microscope. There's the stage. On the stage is where the microscope slide sits. And there are two different um, adjustments for um, focusing. There's the course adjustment. This is the larger of the two knobs. Once again, the course adjustment is the larger of the two knobs. This is what you're going to use when you are in low power. The other one is the fine adjustment. The fine adjustment is going to be the smaller of the two knobs, and you're going to use the fine adjustment when you are using the high power. And then there is, of course, the base. So those are the parts and pieces to the microscope. Make sure that you know all of their functions also for your test. The electron microscope uses beams of electrons to produce images almost 1,000 times more detailed than a light microscope. There are two main types of electron microscopes, and we abbreviate them, which is very important. There's the transmission, or the TEM, which signs, shines a beam of electrons through. So transmission is through a thin specimen. And then there's the scanning electron microscope, or the SEM. And this scans a narrow beam of electrons back and forth across the surface. So this one will go back and forth like this, and this one, it goes through. Both require a vacuum to operate, and one thing that you must know about a vacuum is in a vacuum, there is no oxygen. So the samples must be preserved and dehydrated. In other words, they have to be dead. Specimens must be dead when you are using an electron microscope. Living cells cannot be observed with an electron microscope. And if you know Miss Carey, you know this is going to be a test question, whether it's true or false or whatever. Living cells cannot, cannot be observed with an electron microscope. And that concludes the notes for the microscope.